Shalom family. Uh, back at you guys one more time with another quick video, a very quick lesson today about a very important subject, uh, a very important topic of discussion which pertains to the confusion around what we today or what Christians today uh, call Good Friday, okay? Now, we're going to get some uh, understanding of this and understand the day in which Christ actually did die. Uh, which harmonizes with scripture, okay? And what's critical to understand about this entire topic of discussion is something that most Christians are completely ignorant about, which is what is known in the Hebrew culture or the Hebrew community as the High Sabbath, okay? And we're gonna break this down very quickly, very short, very quick lesson. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into this thing, all right? We're gonna begin today with John chapter 17, verse three, okay? Scripture that's well known. As a matter of fact, I don't even need to look this up. Majority of y'all know this scripture, wherein it says, this means everlasting life. Uh, they're taking in knowledge of you. Other translation says, everlasting life is to know the one true God, the almighty creator, and his son, whom he sent forth into the world, who the world called Jesus Christ, okay? So, when it says that it means everlasting life to be taking in knowledge of God or to know God, that means it's very important as we exercise our faith in God, and as we journey, sojourn along this path to eternity, that we take in or we continue to know God more and more, okay? And listen, this document, this living word that we have in front of us is a gift that the Most High God has given us. So for us to say that we know God, we have this internal feeling about God. I have this, you know, I know God, I feel it, right? But we don't apply what he has given us, okay? You're basically, I don't wanna call you a liar, but it's like you're lazy, okay? We understand the opposite, the, the negative aspect of knowledge can be pride, okay? can be pride but as brothers we have to work hard to understand that we have to take in knowledge of the most high god meanwhile avoiding pride meanwhile maintaining our ability to be approachable human beings okay so not all knowledge is a bad thing some people treat you know knowing the scriptures or having knowledge of the scripture as a bad thing it's not a bad thing it's going to reveal what's in your heart and how you use it is in is in your hands you understand what i'm saying so it's like if god gives you the ability or if he reveals the truth to you how you apply it is on you okay so all I'm trying to say with that is we should not be afraid to take in knowledge of God because according to scripture, it is eternal life. Not just the understanding, of, not just the knowing of knowledge, but the application of it to our lives, okay? So let's get into this scripture and let's get into this understanding, okay? So the first scripture or the second scripture, the first scripture pertaining to Christ that I want to look at here is going to be Luke 24 verses 5 through 7, okay? Because Jesus Christ promised his disciples uh, and had already foretold them that he was going to be in the grave or he was going to be dead in essence three days three nights okay he said it and he taught it openly amongst his disciples okay that's Luke chapter 24 verses 5 through 7 it reads Luke 24 5 through 7 and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth they said unto them why seek ye the living among the dead he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the Gentiles, of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Okay? The third day rise again, right? Now, uh, what this means is what? That... Uh, the men that were speaking this message were the angels of the Most High God, okay? And he's telling them, remember, the Lord had already told you that on the third day he's going to rise again because they came to look for the body of the Lord, which was gone from the tomb at that time. So what, was the, what were the angels referencing? They were referencing Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. 
Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40. It reads, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay, so just staying on point with what the discussion we're talking about, it's pointing to Jesus Christ being in the tomb or in the grave three days and on the third day rising. And surely Christ had told his apostles on numerous other occasions about this three day prophecy of him being in the tomb. Okay, so with that being said, family, we've been hearing from the pulpit of the Christian church, the Baptist church, majority of Christian churches today, okay, about Good Friday. Mind you, this term is found nowhere in scripture. The term Good Friday is nowhere in scripture, okay? So where does this come from? Obviously, this is a, this is a Roman influenced teaching that have gotten into the church. And the reason why it's gotten into the church is because the, we're gonna get it. I'm gonna give brothers the benefit of the doubt. Let's take a look at John chapter 19, okay? Because I'm gonna tell you why I believe pastors have just settled with this Good Friday, but on the first day of the week, this and that. I'm going to get you to understand it, okay? John chapter 19. Now, let's understand something. Let's understand simple math, okay? If Jesus, if it's prophesied that Christ had to be in the tomb three days, okay? Understand, Jesus, if he died on Friday, Friday to Saturday is one day. Friday to Saturday is 24 hours. That's one day. Saturday to Sunday is 48 hours right but remember family the bible says that mary magdalene came while it was yet still dark on the first day of the week okay so now <laughs> jesus wasn't put to death early in the morning 4 a.m it was in the afternoon time when christ was actually crucified and, and basically dying right so you know so good friday doesn't even give us two full days Okay? But let's understand why some pastors settle with that understanding. And we're going to get it. We need to get some understanding about this. Okay, John chapter 20 and verses 14. Okay? We're going to look at 14, we're going to look at 31, and we're going to look at 42. All in John chapter 19. Because this chapter does a great job breaking it down. Okay, Verse 14. John chapter 19, verse 14. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and it was about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, Behold your king, right? So Christ is already uh, getting ready to be crucified at this time, okay? Now, it says that it was preparation of the Passover, okay? That's not in the word by accident. And we're gonna point, we're gonna show you guys, and I'm gonna show you quickly what this is talking about when it says the preparation of the Passover, okay? Now let's look at verse 31. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, okay? For that Sabbath day was a high day, okay? So, lazy pastors who don't take the time to understand what is the high Sabbath will say, well, look, it was a Sabbath day. Okay, so they're going to say, well, Sabbath, the Hebrew Sabbath goes from Friday sundown till Saturday sundown. It was the preparation for the Sabbath, right? Is what the verse 14 was talking about. So we're talking about Friday in the day. Now, when day, when nighttime comes, that's the beginning of the new day. So Christ died. And then now it's now the Sabbath day. It's after sunset. We can't leave the body up there. Let's take it down. So Christians have come to the conclusion that this Sabbath is talking about a regular Sabbath that would occur usually on Friday, the beginning Friday evening. Okay. I'm giving Christians the benefit of the doubt here, okay? Because I think there's more to the whole Good Friday thing than that. But that's me giving them the benefit of the doubt, okay? But what people are not even looking at is what is in plain sight. The scripture specifically tells us for that Sabbath day was a high day, okay? Now, before we get into that, let's take one more scripture. Verse 42. Verse 42. It says, there laid they Jesus because, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, 
okay, because the uh, spectral was nigh at hand, okay? So basically then you know again, it's preparation day. So now what are they talking about when they say preparation, okay? Verse 14 told you plainly that it was the preparation of the Passover, okay? Nicen 14. Let's get some understanding of what we're talking about here quickly. Leviticus chapter 23 verses 6. Leviticus chapter 23 and verses 6. Leviticus chapter 23, okay? We'll start in verse 5. Well, actually, we'll start in verse 4, okay? These are the feasts of the Lord and holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. In the 14th day of the first month, which is Nisan, okay? At evening is the Lord's Passover. Uh-huh. Okay, and on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Now check out verse 7. In the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein brothers and sisters and for my pastors out there okay i respect y'all i ain't gonna simply say i don't respect you okay i respect y'all but let's get some clarity here okay we need to understand that there are sabbaths in the bible that do not fall on friday evening it is what is referred to oftentimes as a high sabbath okay uh, a, a special Sabbath that can fall on any day of the week okay so when the Lord here says on the 14th day the 14th day of the first month meaning nice and you are to do X Y and Z okay there's 365 days right in a calendar year so what this means is that this 15th day or 14th day can fall on any day of the week it is and it tells you in verse 7 that the first day of this seven day time period is a sabbath and you should do no work okay that's why we call it a high sabbath because it can fall on any day of the week okay family so we've already established that friday it is impossible for christ to have been in the tomb three days and have been dead on friday okay so we need to understand that according to what we read in john it was it was a high sabbath okay so if you go backwards in time from Sunday, because the scripture is clear, it says Mary went into the tomb early before the sun rose on the first day of the week, meaning Sunday. OK, so she in the tomb about four or five in the morning, five thirty, something like that in the morning, looking for the body of Christ. So if we go back three days from that, what day are we talking about when Jesus died? We're talking about Wednesday, Thursday. And it's very simple, brothers. If we just look into the scripture and do some research, you will come to the correct understanding. Now, why do I do this? I don't do this to try to uh, you know, get attention or any of that stuff. I do this because there are brothers and sisters who are sitting in your pulpits who cringe every time you start talking about Good Friday. They think it to themselves, man, the Lord ain't showed this man he wrong yet. The Lord ain't convinced this man to, to get into these scriptures and understand that he had been taught wrong so that he can stop teaching us wrong. Y'all understand where I'm coming from? Because the word of God tells us that those worshiping the most high God must worship in spirit and truth. How much more so for the teachers of the people to represent God in a way that is true, okay? And it ain't take us but 15, 10 minutes to come to this understanding. All right, brother, so with that, I say shalom. I'm done with this lesson for today. Um, listen, the last thing I want to say about this is, look, the word of God tell us that in the last days, true knowledge will become abundant in the land. That's what brothers have to understand, okay? So when we receive this, this, this information, you know, when the Lord reveals it to us plainly in scripture, you already know it's time for us to apply it, right? And Pride is a person saying to themselves, look, man, I've taught this this long. I've done this this way for so many years. I can't change this. It's going to be an embarrassment to me or whatever it is. So I can't change it. This is what it is. This is what I'm rocking with. This is what I'm just, I'm going to go out on my shield about it like this. That is the epitome of pride. That's like, that's like the definition of pride, brothers and sisters. And that's the opposite of repentance, right? And we have to understand 
it's a blessing to come to accurate knowledge of the Lord, right? Because there's people out there who, who, who are going to reject Christ, who have been rejecting him all, all their lives because they've never, come, they've never humbled themselves or come to a correct and accurate understanding. They cannot reject the pride that is in them and bring themselves in subjection under the Christ, right? So now I'm preaching a whole nother lesson, but I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, I pray that your heart not be hardened by the fact that, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, that, that it's me bringing this message to you. You know what I'm saying? I know sometimes I talk a certain way, my eyes probably light up a certain type of way. I'm passionate about these subjects, but don't misconstrue my passion uh, for like, uh, as, as, as something that's meant to try to, you know what I mean, uh, one up you or whatever the situation is or disrespect to you. I mean, none of that, man. I mean, completely 100% well. But what I will say about it is, look, brothers and sisters, we gotta look at this thing in a real way and understand that we don't have forever. We don't have forever, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have forever. So the urgency, the, 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 my passion comes from understanding the urgency of the times that we live in and understanding the urgency of, or the, the, the seriousness of teaching things wrong. Because it is a, it is a sin for the, for the man of God, the, the leader, okay, the person speaking to represent God, to be teaching things wrong. Christ taught us this when he spoke to the scribes and Pharisees, okay? He made it clear. So, you know what I'm saying? Hey, all I'm gonna say, last thing I promise I'm done, is when we bring forth the truth, right? What that does to the listener is, it helps them to see that the Holy Spirit of God is itself real because the Word of God says that the Holy Spirit, Christ himself said in the book of John, that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the truth. Do you understand me? So when brothers get to bringing forth the truth, you have to understand that there's a spirit of God behind that. See, so this message is not about me. This is about God. This is about the spirit of God being magnified and glorified in the earth, brothers and sisters. So what I'm saying is this. If you out here teaching false doctrine, that means that the spirit of truth is not what is leading to the things that's coming out of your mouth, which means that you are scattering the sheep of God. They're going to start leaving the building, okay? The real sheep of God. It don't mean that other sheep ain't going to come in. But those ain't necessarily the real sheep of God. You understand what I'm saying? Those aren't necessarily the elect. Because the elect, it says, this is the word of God says. My sheep hear my voice and they know me. You see what I'm saying? The spirit of truth going to be, I'm going to put my spirit in them. They're going to understand the difference between the truth and the lie. And they're going to be drawn to the spirit of the truth. You understand, brothers and sisters? So it's to our benefit to, what I'm saying, reject pride, apply the truth to our doctrine, to our teachings, to our congregations. And through that, may we be blessed. Let's never fear, let's never fall back due to fear of man or fear of rejection or fear of how somebody else is going to feel or think about the truth. No, no, no. No. We're not cowards. See, the word, even the word tell you that the cowards and the unbelievers will not be in the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? So we're not coming here asking for forgiveness for bringing forth the truth. The truth is what it is, brothers and sisters. So if you don't like the truth, then really your right is not with me. They have nothing to do with me and how I brought forth the message. The problem is that you have, the problem that you have is between you and the Almighty. Like, share, subscribe. Until we chat again, I'm out.